When I thought about what global women could become, I thought this is an organisation of top women helping each other. We owe so much to the founders, to those women who had the vision and the capacity to form global women um, and see the need and choose to do something about it, which was not easy back then. Putting global women together, at the beginning it was a struggle to get it seen as taken seriously. Uh, but one of the great changes I've seen is that that shifted. Now, many, many male leaders in New Zealand see the need for change, and Global Women has been a very important partner uh, in making that change. And of course, the collaborations with others that Global Women have been able to achieve, I think, is demonstration of the fact that the original idea was an idea that's time had come. I guess the key catalyst for... Uh, Global Women has been its ability to influence through its membership base. Uh, women were initially chosen for their uh, seniority of position um, and through that, their ability to influence organisations and organisations' thinking in particular. And I, I'm very proud of what, it, what it's become. I'm very proud that people come up to me and say, you should be a member of Global Women. Oh, I say, thank you, that's kind of you, <laughs> you know. I think that's neat. I think people. I think it's neat. People want to be a part of it. I think it's neat that it's become a market leader. I'm very pleased about that. But like any organisation, it goes on a journey. And what it was back then, and what it is today, it's evolved. Um, and the support of the increasing number of members woman of influence but also the power of the partners that are supporting us has enabled us to transform global women into what it is today. We were very uh, gender focused and uh, our membership certainly saw that that was the area in most need of change for New Zealand at that time. Uh, it became clear that there was a much wider mandate that business was looking for of diversity and inclusion. So it was a broader, much broader mandate than just gender. And I think that was a natural development and progression in the market. It wasn't that uh, we'd started with the wrong focus. It was that as the market started to understand what was possible, the market realised that actually there were, um, that diversity had to include a much wider concept demanding that we recognise our worth and put it on the table and then draw people toward it to pay has created a very strong and robust partnership that I'm very proud of. As I reflect on the 10 years, Global Women can take huge credit for getting the conversation on the table and forcing the hard conversations to be had, we've all realised we've got to focus much more on the cultures in our workplace and get the culture right um, and then you know, the numbers will follow and certainly hopefully be more sustainable. What we need to do is we need to revolutionise our definition of merit. It's not gender based, it's not race based, it's not LGBTI based or sexuality based. We need to define merit taking into account that every person has a unique identity made up of many different things. So inclusion in New Zealand means leaders everywhere of significant competence making change, and you are seeing that. So I think Global Women has contributed, uh, but they've also contributed to the conversation around diversity and inclusion, the expectation that uh, guardianship and governance is the responsibility of women and men. And in New Zealand, I think we're probably leading some of that change in that respect. It's no longer just why don't we have women in senior roles. It is a much, much broader conversation in the community about diversity and inclusiveness. The work that Global Women has done has clearly contributed into that conversation. Every time we have membership applications and you read through those nominations, you can't help but be inspired 
at the amazing women that we have in this country. But I do wonder where we would be if we hadn't had the powerhouse of those original founders with the vision to say enough. It's time to do something about this. It's phenomenal being part of such an amazingly diverse group of women that all have a common purpose. I think all the tools are there. It's wonderful when you get called at the last minute as a member to go and present on this topic. You just go onto the website and you can push a button and there's PowerPoints there, there's data there, there's Q&As there. So we've done, you know, that we've come a long way for members and giving, giving them the tools um, and giving them the support. But I still think we've, we've got a way to go and figuring out how we can assist them to collectively come together to make a difference. We've tried some things. I think, I think there's still more work to be done there. I think Global Women is playing a, a really, really important role, but it needs to continue to respond to its members. And look, what I thought was important may not be what the next generation of leaders in Global Women think is important. In my phase, we've done lots of activity. My hope uh, for those who take over is that their activity will turn into outcomes and results. There, there is still an awful lot of work to be done. Um, but it's as with all things, if you don't start, you will um, never achieve a goal. The numbers have to move and we have to address the reasons they're not moving. So my greatest reason for getting involved in Global Women was actually to give back. If you're going to be a part of Global Women, these are networks worth having. It, you know, you get entree into all sorts of areas you wouldn't otherwise get entree into. Plus, we have a lot of fun. It's really hard when you're a lone voice trying to address diversity and inclusion. But with the cohort of Global Women members, that is incredibly powerful. And it makes it a lot easier. It's a one-stop shop. You can network with everybody that really matters. Global Women, for me personally, has help me see into the lives of other top leaders. For the, the newer group of global women, make it your own. You know, bring your own self and your own interests and your own needs and push the leadership to respond to you because I think that's what will keep it alive. We're there for each other through the good times and the tough times. We learn from that and we support each other. And I think it's actually one of the most powerful aspects of global women.